Now, Turkey says it will not act against Islamic State in neighbouring Syria without the direct help of its NATO allies. The alliance chief is in Ankara for talks on the crisis. Turkey wants a US-led no-fly zone over northern Syria and blames President Assad for the situation in the country, repeating calls for the Syrian leader to step down. When asked what Turkey is doing against Islamic State as the only NATO country with jihadists on its border, the foreign minister said the nation will play its part, but only after a joint NATO decision has been made. Well, we'll get more details on this story from our correspondent later this hour. Uh, for more insight, though, let's bring in UK-based journalist and broadcaster Neil Clark. Um, thanks very much for coming on to RT this afternoon. Now, Turkey says it wants a no-fly zone in northern Syria, but the Islamic State doesn't have an air force. So what's the logic of such a request? Well, it's quite clearly not aimed against the Islamic State, is it? It's very important to understand that Turkey's main objective, and it's been its main objective since the summer of 2011, is the toppling of the Assad government in Damascus. That's Ankara's main aim. And they're calling for a no-fly zone because they, they want it directed against the Syrian government. Uh, if the Turkish government uh, really wanted to defeat ISIS, they were sending the troops because they outnumber the ISIS forces by, by about 10 to 1. Uh, so their call for a no-fly zone, coupled with their call also for Assad to step down, tells us what their uh, real objective is. They're more concerned with toppling Assad than they are with fighting ISIS, and they are with uh, than they are with protecting the Kurdish people. And of course, uh, you know they've been fighting a long war against the Kurdish separatists in their own country for a long time. So that shouldn't really surprise us. Um, I mean, we've seen an example, haven't we, in Libya where a no-fly zone was declared to protect innocent civilians, it was said, uh, but then that did lead to the toppling um, of Gaddafi. Yeah. So, what, in your opinion, what are the chances of that happening? What are the chances that perhaps NATO would agree to it too and then that could actually be the result? Well, I think that's what Turkey wants, isn't it? And that's why they're calling for it, because I think that there is the same, the same objective. The United States and Turkey have the same uh, objective, which is the toppling of, of, of the government of President Assad. I think Turkey wants it done now or, or as soon as possible. I think the US has put it on the back burner. I think the US strategy is to clip the wings of ISIS, not to destroy them completely, because they can't do that without boots on the ground, but I think to clip the wings of ISIS and then use this period to also train the so-called moderate rebels or train some other non-ISIS forces up. And then perhaps, say, eight months from now or, t or t 10 months from now, uh, for those uh, rebels that the US has trained to, to, to move on to Damascus and then be helped by NATO air power and to topple Assad. I think the US has, uh, hasn't put the toppling, it hasn't changed its overall strategy. It wants Assad toppled. But at the moment, they're fo focusing on uh, cutting the wings of, 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 of ISIS. But I think it'd be a mistake to think that uh, the ultimate goal of the whole operation isn't the toppling of the government in Syria. Uh, and the, the immediate crisis right now, Neil, is what's going on in Kobani and the possibility yep. that, that that town could be taken over by Islamic State. Why doesn't Turkey send in its own troops now to protect the Kurds? Why is it so insistent mm. it has to wait for NATO? Well, absolutely. It shows us what uh, Turkey's real aims are. Uh, as you said, Turkey could go in there, they could... Uh, save the people, the people who face being massacred, the Kurdish people there in that town. And, and of course, that's what should happen. But they're not going to do that. They want what they want is uh, NATO to join in. They want NATO ground troops. They want British and American ground troops. And that tells us what their objective is. They want uh, to use those forces, which would then uh, join up with other rebels to topple the government in Syria. I think we've got a phony war going on here, Andrew. Uh, we've got a phony war because it's not really about defeating ISIS. Have, had the US and its allies wanted to defeat ISIS, uh, you know, they wouldn't be doing the things they're doing at the moment. They would be actually working with the Syrian government. There's a great piece by John Pilger just published called From Pol Pot to ISIS, and he makes this very same point, that if the West really was concerned with defeating ISIS, they would be actually allying with Syria, with Iran and Hezbollah. These are the people, forces who, who could defeat them. But of course, they're not doing that. And it tells us what the, the strategy is, which is to topple the Syrian government, as I've said. But, but of course, um, also a strategy would be not to involve troops on the ground, but how on earth could they solve this situation and also yeah. the crisis in Kobani without doing that? And if that yeah. does happen, sure, surely that ensnares them in Syria and Iraq and it makes them very difficult to get out. Yeah, but, but I think that uh, really, uh, you know, the, the, there, is, there is an immediate humanitarian crisis at the moment going on. And it's clear that just air power is not going to save the Kurdish people there. It, it, there. So I think that obviously there needs to be some, if, if, if ISIS is to be uh, de defeated or to be pushed back, there needs to be uh, ground troops. But as I said, the trouble is, is the main actors in this, the US, Turkey and its allies, are still more concerned about toppling Assad than they are with defeating 
ISIS, the logical step would be to work with the Syrian government, with regional players, including Iran, and, and, and have the widest possible coalition to defeat ISIS. But they're not doing that. And, and I think that uh, ISIS will not be defeated. It's quite clear they're not going to be defeated by, by airstrikes. All they're doing is, is, is making a, a, a not, not a big enough impact on them as they would do uh, with, without ground troops. So I think that the whole this whole crisis can only get worse unless there is a major shift in policy from the Western powers to drop their obsessional uh, drive to try and topple a government in Syria. So, you know, they're fighting basically two wars in Syria. They're fighting, on one hand, a war against ISIS. On the other hand, they're fighting a war against the government which is fighting ISIS. So it is quite ludicrous, really. Mm. And until there is a change in policy, I think there's only going to be more bloodshed, I'm afraid. OK, Neil, we'll do have to leave it there, but that's um, the UK journalist and broadcaster Neil Clark live there from the UK. Thank you.